I always said uh, it's not the number of caps you play, it's it's how you play and the number of, in each of those caps. And there's no doubt that um, still now you're, uh, you're performing as uh, one of the top players in the world. And um, I take my hat off to you, mate. So uh, enjoy the moment. I know there's uh, a few games to go that you'll be uh, looking forward to uh, nailing. Um, wish you all the best. And uh, it's been a, been a pleasure to... To watch you uh, come in in 2010 and then uh, to where you are now, um, even though it does mean uh, taking a record I uh, cherished, um, uh, I couldn't think of it going to a better guy. So, uh, well done, mate. Cheers. Yeah, how are you going to um, deal with that sort of fuss that's made about you th through the week? Yeah, it's uh, like a, it, it's a really humbling one, um, but at the same time, it, it's one of those ones that I've always just tried to probably put to the side. Um, and it, it's just probably having an understanding that you know we're away so the phone will probably be really busy at, at morning and night from people that are here but also people at home so you've also just got to read those those messages and actually take some time to um, enjoy it because it, it is a it is a, a different one and um, yeah a pretty cool one of that. I suppose it's one of those things that you'll look back on and be really proud of but it's hard to to focus on too much in the moment. Like, I obviously played a lot of rugby with yourself and some of those older guys, uh, they, they were really, really good um, on passing on knowledge. And I remember talking to Conrad Smith, he goes, I was really bad at always looking forward to the next one, never really stopped and, and enjoyed the moment. And I think that's just rugby players in general, we're always, oh, the next week you're in a tournament or a competition and um, to actually stop and take a moment and, and, and look at it, I think that really happens when you do finish from talking to a lot of the guys, then um, when you're sitting at home or you know talking to a mate about an old story, and I think that's when it really hits home of how awesome some of the things that we have accomplished as, as a team, but then also as individuals. Hey Samwise, hey congratulations on 149 mate, heck of an effort. You know, it couldn't happen to a better bloke. Uh, I thought after that first one down in New Plymouth, you're definitely gonna have a few more under, under the belt, so congratulations. How did, how did that feel? Like when you you came off the bench and when you stood on and you're an All Black forever. So I probably had the the best uh, first game ever. Came on at, at lock. I uh, took Brad Thorn off. Uh, so it was Anthony Borick and I. Um, when it was a scrum, they went early, so I got free kicked. Pity quick tapped. I think the next phase, Pity uh, Anthony Borick's gone through, given back to Pity. I've caught the ball, fallen over line and scored. So the first thing I've done as an All Black. Just had to catch the ball and fall over and score a try. So I'm um, obviously cloud nine um, going, this is awesome. As the game unfolded, scored, scored another try. The game blew out. Uh, we, we, we put them away pretty convincingly and um, thought it played really well. And um, Yeah, just remember saying to the media afterwards, you know, scoring two on my debut, I'd be happy if I never scored again, which was the worst thing to say because <laughs> I think I've scored about three since then. So started out with a really good uh, strike rate, but... Um, yeah, it's definitely dried up since then. So many great players have worn the black jersey. You will be standing alone as the most capped player of all time as an all-black. What an achievement. So I'm super fortunate to be having a chat with uh, Braden, Caroline and Adam Whitelock. One of the things I've always loved and admired about your family is, is how supportive you've been. Um, of all the boys really, you know, I don't think I've missed yet many after match functions and you're both always so approachable. Is that, where did that come from? Is that something you always wanted to do? Um, I suppose it's uh, come from uh, grandparents etc, both sides of the family and the support crew's not here, it's all the ones at home. So it's always just been a way of life, Caroline? Mm, I yeah. think as parents you just support your kids whatever they do. And, and like the longevity in his game, have you seen, have you seen him evolve as a, as a, as a man? No, oh, 100%. There's just been so many influences along the way. Brad Thorne, for a start. If you think of a goal kicker, someone kicking at goal, they're in the now. Brad Thorne was very much about, we're scrummaging now, we're going to do that bit now, then we're going to the line out. That's evolved Samuel's play. I think Brad's been a great influence in that way. How did you, how did you bring up um, four professional rugby players? Obviously, people relate to that, and the boys are in the um, spotlight because they play a professional sport. But to me, the number one thing is that they're good guys. The rugby has been um, is something everybody sees, but to me it's how good a guys they are and, and their families and their kids and, and all those things are the things that you gauge by. And, and you guys, when you, when you look back on 
Sam, Sam's career, and I, I know there's still some very big games to come up. Is, is there a game that sort of stands out? Um, and, and lucky enough to be in some stadiums, uh, you know, in the World Cup 2011, which you played, Andy, and you know, I saw him in the World Cup in 2015. There's lots of little moments I see, um, you know, whether it's a turnover. I mean, I was a back, but I can still appreciate what the forwards go through. It might be <laughs> getting a line out. It's playing, I you know, side by side set with Samuel and my brothers and Crusaders, you know, playing and against the Stormers in Cape Town. Uh, like, that was a special moment. Uh, we, we sort of won ugly, but we just won by being tough. And, and you were all out on the field? Yeah, all out on the field uh, with George, Samuel, myself and Luke, and, and Ben was there as well. A, a moment or a game for you? Um, probably the 2011 World Cup, 8-7 against France. Even Sam, he started and came off, and I remember watching him, he was sort of hiding behind the, the advertising boards, and then as soon as the whistle went, he jumped that and he ran out in the middle and of course celebrating it, so that was pretty special. I did actually ask a coach um, that's coached all your boys, I did say, who's your favourite white lock to this coach? Do you know what he said? Me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He yeah. said, Caroline's my favourite yeah. white lock. <laughs> Saw him last weekend. He uh, said, how's my favourite white lock? <laughs> oh, so good. What an answer. Hi, Sam. Just want to congratulate you on the milestone coming up. Um, there's only a handful of people that know what it takes to, to do what you're about to do and what you've put into it. Um, and it's not players or anyone in the game that's come, come close to that. It's your family and your close friends. How have you been able to do it for so long, like so consistent for such a long time? What's, what's the secret? I, I couldn't. <laughs> I reckon the thing that definitely helped me was my upbringing. So having three brothers, so it was like being, you know, at rugby training and all those things. So we were always really, really competitive. Um, but I was set up really well early on in my career. Like I spent a lot of time with um, Brad Thorne as the senior all black lock. I played with him at the Crusaders for a couple of years and he, um, did it in his own way, but he really set me up to be successful. So he, without forcing it on me, took me aside and explained what he'd done, how he'd been successful, and, and a couple of the tricks that he'd learned around looking after your body and stretching, uh, being professional. A lot of those lessons I'm trying to pass on to some of the younger guys now because, you know, Thorny and there's a whole group of guys, yourself included, that did set me up early whether it was provincial rugby, super rugby or international and it's, it's definitely helped me to be um, here still now. Don't you love it too when you actually get in that all black environment, you start to learn that a lot of the guys in the team, they weren't superstars going through. A lot of, a lot of people had got stories of, of tough, going through tough times and that's actually, is the difference. Guys that missed selection in different teams, age group sides, but then also a lot of guys that played a number of sports when they're at school, whether they're at a little country school or um, their first 15 wasn't that good, so like I know you played a lot of cricket. Um, Victor Vito played a lot of volleyball, so there's a lot of um, similarities of guys that have been successful. They weren't just the one trick pony at school, and sometimes it's the small small town. They go right, we need someone to play touch, we need someone to to play on the you know senior men's cricket team. And you're 15, you're you're batting 11th, but you're actually getting out there and giving it a crack and. Um, I think that's, as Kiwis, one of our things that we definitely, um, we do do well and uh, it is cool when you run into people and they say, oh, you know, I play three sports and I'm, I'm doing this as well and they're actually uh, growing the understanding of, of just competing and um, I think that's why the All Blacks have been the way they have for, for such a long time. He's got support from Wepu. Wepu looking round. Fires a back and look at that. Can you believe that? Sam Whitelock has been on the park for a minute and he's cut himself a try. And then Whitelock. Oh, Sam Whitelock. Boy, there's a big future for this lad. <laughs>